Ugh. Say that shit. Woof. Wait, what? <laughs> Cheers. Welcome to church. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, or for the first time, to Amateur Intellectuals. We are a podcast, which I have full faith that you've gathered by now. Um, We are two friends that just want to dive in and talk about stuff uh, a little bit deeper, get our brain gears working, and also kill brain cells while we drink. (laughs) So it all evens out in the wash, doesn't it? (laughs) I'm here with my co-host, Kendall. Hey, girl. Hi. Um, And today is going to be a big topic that I did my best to narrow down. So let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, Okay. I'm starting with the question. Kendall. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. What? (laughs) (laughs) Do you think we will ever have a World War III? And if so, how do you think it would start? Oof. I don't. I, I mean, it's inevitable, I would think. Um, I don't think it will be like any of the ones of the past because I just don't think that like boots on ground or, or is how we fight wars anymore, um, mm-hmm. at least in the most developed countries. So I think like cyber and maybe just cyber, like <laughs> <laughs> missiles mm-hmm. and drones and shit. I, I, mm-hmm. It'll happen. I'm not looking forward to it, but... Hopefully it's not in our lifetime, says selfish of me. (laughs) But the way that we're acting, I'm like, yeah, no. Like, we, like, put that on a speed track. Um, Yes. Hopefully we'll be dead in the ground sleeping, enjoying peace, while the ruckus is up above us. (laughs) For the first time ever, it's peaceful. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I think you have a really good point. I think um, warfare is an industry like anything else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've also got territories and countries and things that just, you know, are not going to stop. Like, there's not going to be some... It's always going to be here, right? Right. Is it going to hit a world war level? The fact that we've had it twice already tells me that there's potential for it to happen again, um, always. And it could be something as, as um, I say simple, but it's not simple, but something as, you know, quick as, you know, North Korea decides that they want to nuke somebody or whatever. I mean, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're at this level of threat and it's like a Cold War situation, whether or not we do go to nuclear weapons anyway whatever. But today right. we're going to be talking about World War II. Um, so before we get into all that um, stuff, uh, let's talk about the drink so yes. we can, uh, you know, get through it with a little comfort. <laughs> Just relax. Yeah. So the drink today I picked because it has to do with my personal favorite story from World War II, um, which is The Little Ships of Dunkirk. Does that sound familiar at all? The Little Ships of Dunkirk? Okay. So there's a movie in, like, I want to say 2018 or something, 2018, that came out about it. Um, And it was a much bigger story than just that. But here's what I love about it. Um... There were about 850 civilian boats that sailed from England to Dunkirk, which is in northern France, so over the channel, not far, um, between uh, May 26th and June 4th of 1940, because they had to help rescue more than 336,000 British, French, and other Allied soldiers who were trapped on the beaches at Dunkirk during the Second World War. So... Think about how badass that is. There's a radio call that comes in to just civilians saying your military needs help across the channel. So a bunch of these people who are not in the military, they just own boats, go, well, let's go get our boys. So they sail into an active war zone to pick up their country's soldiers and their allied soldiers, either sailing them home directly or acting as a ferry between the shore and the destroyer vessels because these big warships can't get that close to the beach. So all these boys were trapped on the beach just as targets, as sitting ducks for the Germans. And so all these civilians were like, I'll bring my boat. I don't even care. Like, 
and sailed over and saved all of their young they're young i mean like their neighbors kids and stuff i mean yeah. that gives me goosebumps even when i when i think about it today it gives me goosebumps that there's there was some kind of patriotism feeling that they were just like yeah like let me get my dinghy i'll be right over right exactly. into the middle of an active war zone where there are german planes shooting at you like that's very cool and very scary did you see dunkirk Oh, I sure did. It's my. Yeah. It's probably my favorite war movie. Have you seen it? Yeah, and that's there's they show they show that they show all those boats and like it's just like, kind of like a prototypical like drunk sailor, <laughs> kind of vibe, and they're all just like, ah, let's go get them, and then they I don't like, even care, yeah, like, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just hit like, the gas. <laughs> <laughs> the sea is full of them, or the channel is full of them, and then the like the German planes are like flying over, and they're like. It's just this tense. Very cool, though. Yeah. I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't know that was a real thing. So that's pretty yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Well, it, it just, it kind of, I think what I like about it so much is it kind of breaks the rules of war. So, like, yeah. even though it's just across the street, you know, it's across the channel from where the peace country, like, where you are living peacefully, you know, uh, kind of, because, I mean. Kind of. England got bombed in so too, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. But kind of, sort of. Like, it wasn't, you know, frontline fighting on their it shores. Wasn't a, and like. Right. They, they were just like, let's go get them. They need us. I just mm-hmm. think that there's something so... And it's like it's like old men and, like, you know, kids and stuff just, like, in their boats, like, coming over to get these soldiers. So, yeah. anyway, it again, every time I think about it, it gives me goosebumps. I just think it's such a beautiful act of humanity amid such a horrific, you know, battlefield scene, right? Definitely. Uh, I just love it. Anyway, so today's drink is going to be the Dunkirk Toddy. Love it. Yeah, it sounds so comforting. Uh, So it's one ounce Benedictine Dom, one ounce French cognac, one dash of Angostura bitters, four cloves, one lemon peel, one ounce fresh lemon juice, half ounce honey, top with hot water, garnish with one cinnamon stick, and Mm. uh, you are in business. So you just... You fix the cloves into the wedge of lemon and put it into a glass mug so you can see it. Um, add all the other ingredients and top with hot water. Mm. Stir gently and serve. It sounds so comforting. I would kill. It's like mm, 50 degrees right now, and that sounds like the perfect drink. Mm-hmm. And, like, I like the symbolism behind it because it's a little bit like a hot toddy, which is um, British. Like a British uh, background drink. But then you've got the little French bit coming in too, which were, were the allies at the time. So there's just that little bit of storytelling there too. Love it's that. Cute. It's so cute. I didn't know a hot toddy was British. Yeah. I thought a hot, well, a hottie toddy is like Arkansas. Let me see. I'm pretty sure it's British. I'm going to look it up. Thank I mean, you, it, internet. Seems, it seems like a London fog. It seems like a, yeah, you know, I bet you're right. But uh, then the Arkansians uh, stole it. I'm sure. I mean, what are all of the Americans, if not, you know, uh, descended from the Brits? So, (laughs) yeah. um, So, yeah, anywho. Okay. So, where do we start uh, with World War II? So, let me begin by saying. I'm going to touch on it from an, an historical perspective, first of all. And you have to know, I'm going to make jokes about it. And obviously, it was a very dark time in world history. It's a serious thing. Everyone should know about it and learn about it so it never happens again. Um, I just believe in my heart that some people can learn, you know, a lot by being taught things in a funny way. So, okay. Disclaimer finished. Also, not disclaimer finished. This topic is huge, so I'm just going to do a light overview rather than going too far into any specific direction. Because you could pick any one battle. You could pick any, you know, yeah. you could do the top overview, whatever. So I'm just trying to give it as like a, are you a Gen Z or something that you just never really sat down yet to pay attention in history class to learn about it? Let me just give you the basic, basic facts that you should walk away with that's all i'm trying to do so uh, most people will have at least a fundamental understanding of this okay so let's set the stage we need to start with world war one which i will just blaze through to give you some context because it's not the point world war ii is the point so 
World War One started after um, the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. This was in 1914. It was for political reasons. It was a political, like, rebellion or whatever. So um, these six assassins started whispering to each other. They represented a group that wanted to break off Austria-Hungary's, that's one country, Austria-Hungary's South Slav provinces so that this area could be added to Yugoslavia. So in other words, all I'm saying is they wanted to redraw the map. Okay. Okay. So, And that was the reason. Republican Jeremy Ender. Yes. 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 So, uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Democrats don't do it. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Austria-Hungary was like, um, no, we're, no. And so gave the king of Serbia an ultimatum, which was basically like, knock it off, stop trying to redraw our lines, and also publicly tell everyone that this crap is dangerous propaganda, which goes against the monarchy and our territories and stuff. So like, not only, not only like stop doing what you're doing, but like say you're sorry. <laughs> right. And so like- Wait, time out. Sorry, know. did you say Serbia? Yeah. Yes. What? Yeah, so that's World War One. That's like all what started World War One. So then, so then Austria Hungary said to Serbia, like, you need to publicly Cut condemn the people who are against this kind of rebellion. So Serbia was like, No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna no, no. Thank you. Fuck you very much. No. <laughs> so a pissed off Austria Hungary declares war on Serbia and then Boom, all the other European countries jump into the fight and you've got one of those like tornadoes in cartoons when everybody starts jumping into it and it's just a twister and you see like punches. That's right, all you see. Right. Yes. So that was World War One. Now, this is important to know because it helps answer the question of how Hitler got into power in Germany. Uh, because many people go back and go, how the hell did Hitler get as high up as he did? And so in order to understand that, you need to know how the German people were feeling after World War I and the mindset that they were in. Kind of like an abused spouse is what <laughs> we're going to like relate it to. Collectively, the nation felt like that. They were over it. Like, yes. clap, clap, over yeah. it. <laughs> so, okay. Europe was still recovering from the First World War, and Germany was really, really, really hurting. Um, they were embarrassed, uh, Germany, by the Treaty of Versailles, which was everyone pointing at Germany, saying that they were responsible for starting World War I. Oh, so shit. as punishment, so then all these other countries decided as punishment, Germany, you should lose territory overseas, you should lose territory on the mainland, which Poland and France were happy to pick up for them. And then on top of this, Germany also had to demilitarize and were forbidden from having submarines or an air force. So all these other countries are going like Germany, bad. Wait, okay, sorry, time out. Yeah. So the Austrian Hungarians were fighting with the Serbians and then mm -hmm. the world blamed the Germans? Yeah. Because, like... The Germans were, like, Aust instigating? Yeah, and, like, Austria-Hungary is, like, right there. It's right on top of Germany. It's right next to it. So, like, yeah. So, it, it, it was much more complex than what everybody decided on. But politically, everybody pointed to Germany and was like, ooh, you were the instigator in this. You were the problem. Wow. So, yeah. So, okay. So, remember, they get robbed of their territories overseas, Germany. They get robbed of, um, like, mainland spots, so their borders changed. So Poland and France, remember, Poland and France were two places that were invaded in World War II. We'll get to it. But they were happy to pick up the new borders, right, their neighbors. Uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Germany gotcha. had to demilitarize. They were forbidden from having submarines or an air force. And they had to, they had to pay a huge amount in war reparations to the tune of $33 billion. God. <laughs> and we're talking just after World War I. So we're talking like, you know, the 1920s here. That's like quintillions. Or... That's like, that's like <laughs> <Except> trillions <laughs> of billions of zillions of dollars. <laughs> I don't know math, but I'm in the, I'm in the area. <laughs> uh, yeah. Legally, scholarly, it's a fuck ton. 
<laughs> it is, uh, yeah, the, the professionals would call that a fuck ton. So think about it. They lost the war, like their side lost the war. Ouch. And then they got publicly spanked afterwards. You know, Germany with all the stuff. I didn't know any of this. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, okay. so that's how World War One ended. It was like, you owe us everything. Like, you owe the world, you piece of shit. Like, you know, like, and also pay us everything. And also, like, you can't be trusted with submarines or an air force. You can't have a military because we don't trust you. So. Wow. Be- yeah. So, okay. So think about this mindset. Because they had to pay so much in reparations, their economy got destabilized. And so inflation happened, as it does. So you, no joke, people needed to needed a wheelbarrow to carry enough paper, money, to buy bread. Wow. Because of inflation was so, like, off-kilter. Ridiculous. Jeez. Meanwhile, you've got... Hitler, who's this really good moving public speaker, he's rising to power through the Nazi party, which is what he created after he came back from World War I as a wounded veteran. His views were attractive to the German people because he was basically saying that current leadership in Germany was incompetent and that the new order, capital N, capital O, new order, the Sith or whatever <laughs> like <in Star> Wars, <laughs> would literally bring order to the country that was lacking so much. The platform of the Nazi party was that Germany would have an authoritarian political system that flowed down from one supreme leader rather than a more democratic system. And in the new Germany, all citizens would serve the state and individual rights would be sacrificed for the good of the Führer state. Führer just means leader. Okay. Okay. So you've heard like, you know, Mein Führer, like they make fun of that. Like it just means it's German for just leader. Okay. So let's just pause right here and uh, interpret that the way Kendall and Caitlin do. Okay. I just imagine this pitch being like, you know, Hitler shouting to the crowd or whatever. And he's like, we're not going to get spanked by the other countries anymore. And then all the people are like, yeah. And then he's like, and we're going to have a supreme leader who will get things done for you. And all the people are like, yeah. And then he's like, and we're going to give up individual rights for the good of the country. And the people are like, "Eh, eh, wait, wait, (laughs) wait, what? Yeah. What? And then Hitler's like. We're going to create a country of racially pure and loyal Germans. <laughs> and from there, we'll cleanse the world of all the genetically inferior scum. And the people are like, wait, what the fuck just wait, happened? Right. Wait, we were with you a second ago. But what? <laughs> we just went to crazy town. What happened? What happened? I Yeah, I read statistically. Obviously, there's like a progression here that you're going through where he's not he like he's not coming up front with all of that stuff. At least. Mm hmm. Is my understanding. I mean, and then... he everything was on fire and their country was really hurting. So the promise, again, think about like an abusive relationship. The promise of like, I'll take care of you. Like, come with me and like, right. you know, we'll bring order to this and we'll kick their asses and whatever. The people were like, yeah, like do that. We're hurting, you know. Well, and it makes, it makes total sense. And if this thing is on, um, it sounds like what we... Whenever people were like, you have Trump, whatever, to syndrome, um, it sounds like somebody getting up on a stage and being like, America first. America's been so losing. I am so glad you said that. America's you soulmate been losing. of mine. I am, and, I am so glad. Yes, yes, yes. And, and they going. were all like, he's not Hitler. He's not saying we should kill people. And I'm like, no, he's saying the same fucking thing, though. He's saying you're not getting what we're, like, we're not getting what we've earned. We're not getting what we deserve. And we're going to go out there. and We're going to take it. And slippery slope, isn't it? Oh, 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 you'll end up dead in a ditch on fire. Um, Mm -hmm. Thank God. I didn't know Mm -hmm. that. I didn't know that Hmm. until like this week. Um, I thought it was like cyanide. Um, No, like, okay. I'm so glad you brought that up. I have it like whittled into my notes. And so I'm really glad that you're starting to see the parallels here. Okay. One of Hitler's quotes was, quote, either victory of the Aryan or annihilation of the Aryan and the victory of the Jew. Now, how the fuck did we go from 
make Germany great again. It was my next <laughs> sentence. You soulmate <laughs> of mine. Yeah. How do we go from make Germany great again to the Jews are the cause of all our problems? There's a very big difference. Mm-hmm. There's a very big difference between let's make our country one of the fighter, the primary, you know, winners again. And then like the Jews are the cause of all of our problems. Right. So according to Hitler, because he was fucking Looney Tunes, <laughs> Germany's Jews, along with other minorities, were trying to take over the country. Sound familiar? And the current political system kept a soft spot for them, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. made Germany weaker. That was mm-hmm. what Hitler was saying. He also said, quote, mankind has grown great in eternal war. It would decay in eternal peace. What the fuck? So welcome to Opposite Day, where war is good <laughs> and peace is the worst. <laughs> because it makes you soft. Why can't right. we all just sit around and be soft? Uh, my God. I think that sounds amazing and that just eat bad. grapes all day. Literally naked. Let's do it. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why can't we all just not fight each other and send our children to kill each other? Why can't yeah. we just like, <laughs> you know, all, I mean, we don't have to hang out with each other if we don't like no. each other, but like. You can sit by that tree and I'll sit by this one. You can sit, you sit over on mm-hmm. your tree and I'll sit over on my tree. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to have my grapes and don't talk to me. <laughs> I think that's fine. <laughs> Listen, women need to rule the world because we are way too passive aggressive for confrontation. Uh, I was listening to Hillary's podcast last night and I was just like, why? (laughs) Why? (laughs) Okay. So is all this like making sense so far to like how we're brewing a storm? Absolutely. And I didn't know. I mean, you know, like I took the classes and all that shit, but like I've always had a hard time with the two and I'm so glad that we're doing this because this is clearing up a lot of things that I just didn't even know I didn't know well they don't tell it like we tell it (laughs) right (laughs) they just read it from a book and it's all dry and you're like I wasn't paying attention I was thinking about my Pokemon that I was gonna catch (laughs) literally (laughs) (laughs) so yeah you gotta tell it right you gotta tell it right so okay here we go so The point of all this that I've been saying is that Hitler's narrative came at a very, very vulnerable time for the German people. If Germany was doing fine and had won World War I or even lost it but didn't get spanked so much by everybody and become the the scapegoat, um, or like, oh, sorry, I already had that in my notes. I just got ahead of myself. Or if they'd lost but hadn't gotten kicked in the ribs so much afterwards. Got it. Got it, Caitlin. Read your notes. <laughs> double down. <laughs> yeah, double down. Uh, say it with confidence. Then they may not have been interested in the ravings of someone who was arguing for a new Germany. Mm-hmm. Rational-minded people were so tempted for change because things had gotten so upside down in their country. Fair. I mean... Not everybody was like, th- in, they were not solely responsible for World War One. They were not. So the fact that they got, they had to pay this big bill, they got, again, spanked, they weren't allowed to have a military. It's just like putting your pants down and telling everybody, you know, making fun of them and whatever, like hazing, like it's terrible. Yeah. Global. If they hadn't had that and the people were so wounded, like psychologically wounded from what where their country, you know, was... Hitler wouldn't have had a chance because he would have been drowned out by the noise of reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say. (laughs) I like that. Yeah. There was so much shame and all that that it it was just extreme. Right. It was extreme. An extreme overcorrection of what they felt was happening to their country. Okay. So now we're going to – we did that. We set up the background, whatever. Let's set the stage a little bit for what World War II was all about. So I'm going to explain it the way I do. (laughs) Come on. Here we go. You've got the Axis powers, the main ones being Germany, Japan, and Italy. Okay. Germany, Japan, Italy. Italy? Oh, yeah. Italy were our, and they were our enemy, Mussolini. Oh, right, right, right. Italy was our enemy, and so was Japan. So Germany, Japan, and Italy. Much has changed. Now they're all allies. (laughs) Um, Anyway. And then you've got the Allied powers, which were, (laughs) check this out, the Soviet (laughs) Union were friends. The Soviet (laughs) Union. With the Brits and the U.S.? Yep, the U.S., the U.K., the Soviet Union, and China. What in the fuck? This is pre-World War II. Back to Pokemon. Let's trade our cards. (laughs) Let's trade our Pokemon cards because Soviet Union and China can go 
away to the enemy side while we'll collect Japan and Italy and Germany. Come on over. We're friends now. Oh, wow. Anyway, well, that happens all throughout war, all throughout, like, history. Like, we are friends, we're enemies, we're friends, we're enemies. So don't think that that's a weird thing because it it ain't. But okay. So those were the big players. Those were the primary guys in this. But there were 30 countries involved um, in World War II. So it wasn't just these what are, whatever I counted, seven. There weren't just these seven countries. Um, there were a lot of little helpers, uh, too. And, like, a lot of these countries threw everything they had at the war effort. So that includes economic stuff, industrial stuff, scientific capabilities. And this really was the first time that they blurred the line between military and civilian participation. Um, okay, so that's, that's a big deal. It just, it was so on the front of everybody's minds, whether you were at home or you were fighting in the war. So it was the deadliest conflict in human history, neat, super proud, resulting in somewhere between 70 and 85 million deaths, most of which were civilians, um, obviously due to genocide, but there was also starvation, bombings, uh, I mean, disease, I mean, you name it, people died from it because of this. So, um, we said the assassination of Franz Ferdinand started World War One. So what started World War Two? Hmm? Um, any any guesses? I should know this. Um, no, no, it's okay. It's okay if you don't. That's what I'm here for. I'm to make. I'm the history teacher that makes it fun. There we go. There we go. It was Troy <laughs> Aikman, and. <laughs> I was trying to like do like a Trojan horse joke with a football player and it didn't work. So you're just going to have to tell me. <laughs> okay. We've got, uh, some people disagree, but it's pretty much agreed that the war started on September 1st, 1939, which was when Germany invaded Poland. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Germany, sit down. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? It's Two to get days their later. Back. Yeah, well, and just, like, obliterate everybody in its path. They were just mad, right? Like, they're they think about it as, like, the drunk, like, mad guy that just is throwing punches at women and, like, everybody at the bar. And you're like, oh, my God, somebody, like, take him to the ground. What is he doing? <laughs> he doesn't even, he's not even, like, paying attention to who he's punching in the Coherent, face. Coherent, yeah. <laughs> so, two days later, the UK and France were like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. We're declaring war on you, Germany. Knock that shit off right now. Knock it off. And Germany gave the UK and France the middle finger (laughs) and continued taking control of other European countries. So, like, you know, again, we don't care. Like, I dare you. Like, try to stop me. Right. Yeah, bring it. So by 1941, Germany found some wingmen to help in Italy and Japan. So that's how the Axis Alliance began. So... 1939 you've got like the end of 1939 you've got september they're invading poland you know they're picking some fights the allies are starting to form and go like hey knock it off hey should we should we sit this guy down like you know and then uh italy and japan are like no no like do it let's let's stir some (laughs) some shit up okay so they got in to help germany take more land for germany or they were just trying to get into fight Excellent question. No country ever jumps in without their own motives. Their own. Shit. So, yes, they had their own motives to to have a reason into this fight. And we touch on it a little bit, but that's a really good question. No. And I, I'll argue, I mean, you've got the you've got groups like NATO. That's like if you hit one of us, you hit all of us. And it's yes. a way of being secure. But other than things like that, no country ever enters a war Unless they've got their own, like, priorities and motives. And even if they look like they're being friends, they've they're got their trying. own motives. Right. Yeah, for sure. Peek in the treasure trust. Mm-hmm. I mean, keep your friends close, I guess. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. It's like high school. Like, oh, I'll help you. I'll help it's you pick on girls. that guy or whatever, that girl. <laughs> so, okay. By this point, it's mainly the Axis powers. Again, think Germany, Japan, Italy, but there were little friends too, versus the British Empire, just the British Empire. You've got 
a number of battles in there like that are super famous, like the Battle of Britain, the Blitz, the Battle of the Atlantic, but we're not going to dive into all that. There, but just whatever. Just all you need to take away from this is that there were a lot of really, really noteworthy moments when it was just the British Empire f- versus the Axis powers. So then in June of 1941, Germany was like, hey, Italy, Japan, want to go invade the Sov- Soviet Union with me? <laughs> And they were like, hmm, that's a fucking great idea. (laughs) High five. (laughs) So guess what? Russia was too big and it trapped the Axis powers. Russia has been an issue for a long time. People try to take it over and then they like screw themselves when they do it. Swallow them up. Yes. So anyway, it it Russia trapped the Axis powers, especially the Germans, who then got stuck in a war of attrition, which is another way of saying we all just keep fighting stupidly without any strategy until we drop or run out of resources. That's a war of attrition. Okay. So the winner is usually the one that has more resources and just can outstand that other person, can withstand more. The Alamo. Like losses. Okay. Yeah. It's really stupid if you're a smaller country to do that because you're going to lose. lose. And yeah. you're going to lose a lot of people. Like, yeah. you're going to lose a lot. Um, okay. So the two sidekicks, Japan and Italy, didn't enter the war again without their own motives. So Japan was looking to dominate Asia and the Pacific, and they were at war with China. So they saw this as an opportunity to fuck with the United States and ally with Germany to help get that m- monopoly piece (laughs) that part on the board (laughs) um because again they wanted like all the asian pacific countries and stuff some of which were hawaii um okay so now comes uh and again i'm just i'm glossing over so much so forgive me but now comes japan's bombing of pearl harbor uh along with other attacks to british and american territories out there in that area so before this the u.s was like guys stop don't Mm -hmm. but really didn't care to join the fight it really wasn't happening in our shores we didn't care but after the bombing of pearl harbor america was like oh fuck no hold me back hold me back (laughs) war declared so it's kind of like a bystander was watching a fist fight and then he gets sideswiped in the face right and then he's all in ready to crush some skulls yeah And you're like, wait, where'd you come from? (laughs) (laughs) You weren't part of this a minute ago. So, naturally, after the UK and the US declared war on Japan, the European Axis powers, that just means the Axis powers that weren't Russia, so we've got Italy and uh, Germany and the other little guys, declared war on the US just to show support for Japan. Because, remember, Pearl Harbor... The U.S. goes, declare war on Japan, uh, like you said in the last episode, on December 7th, 1941. So then Japan's wingmen, Germany Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what's the other one? Italy was like, don't worry, don't worry. They're going to declare war on you. We're going to declare war on them. Don't you even worry about it. (laughs) They're not even in the way. Like, they're so far removed. (laughs) <laughs> from like this is how dumb it all is okay so meanwhile japan did some damage like did some legit damage and captured a lot of the western pacific they were on a roll but they stopped advancing forward after something called the battle of midway it was a naval battle between u.s and japan where u.s whooped japan by just seriously damaging their aircraft carriers anyway Whatever. So then they started receding, like, and not doing so much um, outward damage. Island. Hopping. So, yes. So let's touch on what is arguably, I'm going to shift gears here, what is arguably the most horrific part of World War II, the Holocaust. Um, there's a timeline. Um, so in January 1933, remember, uh, they invade Poland in 1939. So five years before. What is that math? Six years before that, Hitler becomes chancellor of Germany. Two months into becoming chancellor, the SS opens the Dachau concentration camp. Two Two months. months? Two months after he becomes chancellor of Germany. 
He didn't waste a goddamn minute. Not a minute. Mm -mm. Not a minute. Then in April, so that was January when he becomes chancellor. What are we saying? Like March, he opens the concentration camp. In April, the German people start boycotting Jewish-owned businesses and by July, there was a law that prevented having children if you were if you had certain hereditary diseases. So eugenics was already starting. Um, so fast forward to 1939, Germany invades Poland, as we've established. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Germany? Guys. Shortly after they invade Denmark, uh, Norway, they attack Western Europe and all kinds of other shit. Like, it, again, just like throwing punches in all directions, Germany. It's like, Germany, what are you doing? Calm, Calm it down. Let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Mad Cam. Mad Cam. I mean, yeah. so b- by 1941, Germany invades Yugoslavia, Greece, and the Soviet Union. So think again, they're fighting everybody. They're just they're, everybody. they're just that guy that just needs to be arrested so that mm-hmm. everybody else can have a good time. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> okay. On July 6, 1941, there were uh, mobile killing units in Germany called the Einsatzgruppen who shot nearly 3,000 Jews. So we're in 1941 now. So 39 was the invasion of Poland, 41. We've got killing groups, like killing militias, right? Tasked with rounding up Jews and killing them. So uh, on September 29th and the th- and 30th of that year, two separate days, the Einsatzgruppen shot about 34,000 more. So 10 times as many as they had done in July on in one day. In one so day. In one day, they shot 3,000 Jews. And then Mm-mm. in two days, they shot 34,000 more. Mm-mm. In November, Mm-mm. on November 7th, 13,000 more Jews were shot and killed. Um, that was November 7th. On November 30th, 11,000 more Jews. So just mass killings. My whole point to this is just one day, tens of thousands of Jews just just not here anymore just murdered just murdered so then that's the end of 1941 merry fucking christmas happy fucking hanukkah (laughs) in march 1942 germany starts deporting jews from outside paris to auschwitz 65,000 go that's march 1942 in july there are more deportations this time from the Netherlands, nearly 100,000 Jews go to Auschwitz. In July, also, Germans deport Jews from Warsaw, Poland, to the Treblinka Killing Center. September, 265,000 more go. Hmm. Think about how different our gen- genealogy would be on this imprint of Earth if all of these people were allowed to survive. Yeah. People, young people women, children that were allowed to grow up, but they weren't. In October 1943, Jews are rescued from Denmark. Thank God. Um, In May 1944, Germans deport 44,000 Jews from Hungary. So they're still going. So in October, the Jews are rescued from Denmark. But in May of the following year, so like, I don't know, six months later or something, Germans are still deporting Jews from other countries and taking them to these concentration camps. January 18th, 1945, there's a death march of nearly 60,000 from Auschwitz. On January 25th, another death march of nearly 50,000. What a death march is, is probably named by the people doing the death march. Um, It was where the SS was forcing evacuations, making sure that these big numbers of prisoners were on the move so they wouldn't fall into allied hands. Um, So it was harsh conditions and being watched under gun Mm -hmm. guard. So we think that the victims named it death marches because they were like, where are we going? It's like, you know, don't worry about it. Here's a gun in your face. So, January 27th, Soviet troops liberate Auschwitz. Big deal. Uh, April 29th, American forces liberate Dachau, another concentration camp. April 30th, so the next day, Hitler commits suicide. May 7th, Germany surrenders to the Western Allies. 
And on May 9th, Germany surrenders to the Soviets. Because remember, they're the Allied powers, but the Western allies are, you know, uh, what did I say? UK, US, not China, not Russia. Um, So UK and US is the Western allies within that group because they are East. Anyway. And And they were allied with Russia and China. So the Soviets liberated one, Auschwitz. Auschwitz, yes. The Russians were fighting with us against them. Yeah. What the? The, the Russians were part of the Allied powers. You yes. said that like nine times, and I'm like, wait, okay. I know. Well, it's hard to believe because China and Russia are our biggest adversaries today, um, but back then they were allied against Germany. Germany because they we had an enemy in common, right? Like we weren't necessarily bros, but like we definitely recognized. Wow that this wasn't worth it, right? And so we were going to join forces and try to stop them. Okay, so we need to touch on uh, more happy things, the Japanese internment. Mm -hmm. Okay, So sorry, excuse me. No, please, please. I read a book. Uh, My mom was like, you have to read this book. It's so, you know, Um, and like it is, but the author's like a fucking douchebag now and I fucking hate him and, I wrote him a lot, like a, like a fucking novel tweet direct, like direct message tweet, because he was just being a dick. Um, Who? Say that again? Who is it? He wrote, I don't remember his name. He wrote this book and it's called How to Kill 11 Million People. Have you heard of that? No. Ugh. It's like 30 pages or something like that. And it's about... Sounds like a manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy's a whack job, so maybe. I'm sure. But he... He's talking about the Holocaust, and he's talking about how all that the Nazis had to do was lie. That's it. They just lied about work, specifically. And they just told the Jews, oh, we're going to take you to a better place. You'll have work and dignity and things to do. And I just... <laughs> there, I think there's a movie called The Piano Man, The Pianist, The Pian something. Yeah, The yeah, yeah, I think I know. I think I know that movie. The Jewish guy the hanging, piano. H- hanging out in the attic, hiding from the Nazis. Yeah. Playing a piano. It's just, it. it's such a hard thing to, I don't, it's a hard thing to wrap my head around. And I don't, I don't know how to like talk about it, deal with it, any, like I, it's just so bizarre to me that you can lie on like a, a, such an easy lie, like such a bullshit ass lie and convince millions of people to essentially just walk into a gas chamber. It's just mind blowing. And then like the Germans, it was only like 12 percent of the Germans who actually believed in what Hitler was doing. It was like a vast majority. Eighty five were. Yeah, but they just sat complacent. But they didn't say mm-hmm. a damn thing. And so it just kept mm-hmm. going. And it's just so. Stati- the statistics of it just mind fuck me. Well, and there's a lot of parallels. It's not as extreme because we don't have mass genocide, but there's a lot of parallels to today's government, right? And the extremism and the template and playbook that they draw from. So one of the things is you have to create a common enemy so that your public will um, vilify who you want them to vilify. Right. So whether that's, you know, the southern border and Mexicans yep. or if that's, yep. um, you know, people taking our jobs, immigrants, whatever, mm-hmm. we deserve to be here more than them because patriotism. Right. That's the same playbook. Same thing. That they used in war, not just Hitler, but any of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, when they try to move people's mindsets into a specific um, influence direction, this is how they do it. And that's why propaganda is so important because – you know, they have they have um, illustrations of Jews looking like animals right. just coming for your kids, like ready to eat them. And like they're poisoning the wells and like the water is not good because the Jews like, mm-hmm. I mean, stuff that just had nothing to do with them. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> they were just sitting there like, guys, our water's poisoned too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're saying. Exactly. It, it's It's that dollar in your pocket is not less than a dollar in my pocket. That's right. And if you can drive people, if you can drive a wedge between groups, it's easier for you to influence in a dictatorship. It's easier for you to move forward through fear um, as a motivator rather than inspiring them to what your change is going to be. Yeah. The harder road is always like, 
no, like peace and like let's mm-hmm. let's all get along and whatever. The easier road to lead is the or the authoritarian one where it's like, I promise a new world where you're on the list and you don't have to think any more than that. Right. You're on the list that we're not gonna come at you. Right. So, you know, you're non Jewish, you're white, you know, whatever. Like you're good, everyone you know, else. Is. You're genetically superior because you're Aryan. Aryan just means like where you came where your lineage came from in um like white European, right. like Northern European descent. So, okay. Uh, I know. I mean, there's, there's a lot to unpack here and it's a really complicated thing, but it's important to know. Cause again, I very much believe that if you ignore history, then it's going to happen again. So here we go. I'll try to soften it for you with comedy. I'll do my best. <laughs> Joan Rivers, Joan Rivers has a joke about, he's like, ah, oh. That Anne Frank, did you read her book? Her book sucks. It doesn't even end. It just, the ending is, and they're coming up the, I I wrote a book and I made an ending to my book. (laughs) Okay. So remember how I said that Germany fucking overcorrected by bringing Hitler on board to lead them through their recovery from being spanked. Remember that? Yes. Okay, cool. So... It's worth mentioning that from 1942 to 1945, in a fucking overreaction to the attack on Pearl Harbor, it was U.S. policy that people of Japanese descent would be taken to internment camps uh, on U.S. grounds. So it's now considered one one of the most atrocious violations of American civil rights in the 20th century. Neat. And we have a lot to pick from. <laughs> yeah. So, that's a proud moment. Um, Roosevelt, who was president at the time, his rationale was that he wanted to prevent espionage. So, initially, California, Washington, and Oregon, the states with the largest populations of Japanese Americans, because, you know, it's on the West Coast, close to Japan, um, were turned into military zones. The FBI rounded up Japanese American community leaders, arrested them, and froze their assets with no cause. Mm. And they were taken to Montana, New Mexico, or North Dakota, and they weren't allowed to notify their families. So many didn't have contact with family until after the war ended. They were just scooped up one day and not heard from again until the end of the war. Unbelievable. Um, and Canada did the same thing shortly after. Oh so my that God. hysteria. Yeah, they were like, oh, good idea. We probably shouldn't have Japanese spies. We better just round every innocent person up because, like, it might save us from some spies. Unbelievable. How do you think that? How do you make an excuse for that? You don't. You don't. You learn from it, hopefully. So, back to the bigger world story. Germany and Italy were whooped in North Africa and Stalingrad in the Soviet Union. So, um... The Axis powers are beginning to uh, lose in the Pacific and lose in Europe. And this is around 1943-ish. So, like, the tables are turning is all I'm trying to say. Like, the Axis powers aren't just, like, gaining territory and blitzing everybody. Like, it's starting, they're starting to lose a little bit. Um, And it's forcing the Axis powers to begin strategic retreating on all fronts. So now it's 1944, the Allies invade German-occupied France, um, and the Soviet Union regains its losses and starts getting ready to punch the Axis powers in the fucking throat. Because the Soviet Union's like, oh, you know. Oh, you thought this <laughs> was over see, now. <laughs> yeah, did you ever see, what is it, The Hangover? It's like, you fuck on me? Like, <laughs> uh, like, uh, like I'm coming at you! Like, ah! Um, so... 1944 and 1945 um, are more losses for Japan in the Pacific and more wins for the Allies. So we're starting to take back, the Allies are starting to take back um, what was lost. Um, So the U.S., the U.K., and the Soviet Union liberated German-occupied areas, and they also invaded Germany. So Berlin fell into the hands of Soviet troops, and Hitler committed suicide, as I said. Um, this meant that the war in Europe was over and the Germans surrendered officially on May 8th, 1945. So we're going to back up a little bit because um, I want to talk. Oh, oh, no, we're not backing up. Sorry. Timeline wise, this is still forward. 
On July 26th, Harry Truman, who's the U.S. president, Winston Churchill from the U.K., and Chiang Kai-shek of China issued the Potsdam Declaration. So, okay, it's just, you know, politicians signing stuff. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It outlined the terms of surrender for Japan. So saying if Japan had not surrendered when, uh, sorry, if Japan does not surrender, then they will face, quote, prompt and utter destruction. And that would end up being, we come to find out, the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So Japan ignored the Allies. Uh, You know, thank you. No, we're not surrendering. Uh, And then on August 6, 1945, Hiroshima was bombed. 80,000 people were killed instantly, uh, with tens of thousands more dying later from radiation exposure. Three days later, Nagasaki was bombed, killing 40,000. That's my birthday. Uh, uh, That is a very uh, (laughs) pivotal day in world history. So fucked up. Yeah. Yes, it is. On August 15th, Emperor Hirohito from Japan surrendered in a radio address calling the bombings a, quote, new and most cruel bomb, Mm -hmm. end quote. Mm -hmm. There's debate whether Nagasaki was necessary, like why they had to go and bomb a second city to abruptly end the war, Mm -hmm. or if Hiroshima would have been enough. But the U.S. says it was necessary to avoid a U.S. invasion thereby saving countless American lives. Okay. Obviously, this is one of those topics that just cause a lot of ethical debate. Huge, huge, huge ethical debate. And you know me, whenever mm-hmm. I've had like two beers, light beers or not, <laughs> I'm all down for it. And uh, a neighbor who I love dearly and I uh, got into a fucking beat down on this topic until about like four in the morning one time. Really? Oh, yeah. Like a year Tell ago. Me. I just Tell me where you stood on it. I, t- I know where you stand, yeah. but tell me anyway. <laughs> yeah. It, there is absolutely no justifiable excuse, reason, anything for that to have happened. And a lot of people himself, he was arguing, believe that, you know, the cost, and there's the asterisks, the American cost would have been higher. And I'm sorry, bombing civilians is just, cannot be in the playbook anytime anywhere especially for like an elite level um war mm, strategy for a country like there, there, there's just absolutely I, i'm so fucking pissed off by it and i just recently heard you know i'm in uh new mexico right now and i was in white sands yesterday and um white sands new mexico is where they tested and developed mm-hmm. the a-bombs um and i tried to go up to <laughs> the um there's like a small museum at the missile test range and I tried to get up there and uh, very, very serious security uh, protocol all up and down it. Sure. Even a border uh, patrol stop, uh, just bizarre. Um, it's like close-ish to the border, but it's not like that close. Mm-hmm. Um, but I heard that like only it was like either 2% or 10% of the bombs actually went off. Like, accidentally they weren't as powerful as they thought they were going to be and so like <coughs> had they <sighs> had they blown up in the way that they were supposed to like japan wouldn't even be on the map mm. and i'm like if that was the mm. plan and you still fucked up and you still killed 150,000 people or however many i think it might have been more than that yeah how do you and think about it think about it from history repeating itself just within this war alone like you spank a country, mm-hmm. and listen, I'm not trying to minimize it by saying a, a nuclear bomb is a spanking. I'm just saying you obliterate their existence as they know it, yeah. whether that's Germany <clears throat> getting um, repar- uh, fined with reparations and not having to have a military or whatever and just being the laughing stock of the world, or you've got truly like, you know, scorching the earth of civilian cities. I just don't see a very good strategy long term about spanking them bigger with the bigger stick when they try to make a fuss right for diplomacy for yeah <laughs> like and not i think revenge. i think you don't do that i mean but then i mean what do you do i i don't know i don't know the answer i'm not a military expert but i just i feel like whooping them bigger isn't necessarily the thing that makes you friends but look i mean japan 
is uh, is an ally now. Yeah. Japan is an ally to all of the Western countries. Yeah. And it I was don't like know. during Obama's presidency that like every year Japan would come out and like apologize for Pearl Harbor. And Obama would <laughs> The Germans do that too for World War II. Really? They're very they're very big about apologizing for the Nazi party. Yeah. It's very big. They even teach their children in grammar school all the way up about it and how they take the onus, like they take the responsibility. Um for how awful it got for the world and for especially the Jewish people. See, and that's but, the fucking difference between us and them. And like, we're like, slavery, slavery, that was 400 years ago. And like, uh, mm, mm. we need yeah. some culture. I mean, part of it is from these people. now it's too soon. I mean, we're so young. And you're right, there is like a culture in the United States that's very, you know, proud and justified in everything we do. Yes. And it's like, if you don't have that reflection of like you know what i might have been wrong i mean think about a country as an individual right you think about it like i can own up when i'm wrong like germany did like i mean we can all do it we're all capable of it and to say we're perfect all the time is really misguided so i think that mentality of like we were always justified in everything we ever did ever no question it's like the fucking okay no you know Right. It's like we, we we pretend like we've never lost a war. And I'm like, who the fuck was Vietnam? Who the fuck was Iraq freedom? Who the fuck was uh, whatever the fuck we were doing in Afghanistan? Who the fuck is the Korean War? Who the fuck is... I mean, it's just like... And we do this, and then everybody else who's lost to it. And I'm like, it's shit. Oh, girl. I know. Listen, I know. I know. There was a TikTok. Did you see that TikTok where some European kid, some boy that was like you know, America, you claim to be the best in the world at everything. Like you have more civil war than anybody or whatever. You go to war offshore than more than anybody, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like your economy, can you explain yourself? And like America jumps in like, ah! <laughs> America's perfect. Don't talk to me that America's not perfect. It's like, ugh, I just wish that there was some, some introspection there and you could look inward and be like, listen, we can own up to the things that Maybe we didn't do to the best of our ability. And be better about it now. And li- no, I just right. That's awful. how you learn. Yeah. But listen, who am I? Nobody. That's okay. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to close with some facts. They're not fun facts because some of them are not happy, but they're just some little factoids about World War II and then we're done. Cool. Okay. So the first German serviceman killed in World War II was actually killed by the Japanese. So, whoops, remember, Germany and <laughs> the Japanese fire. were friends. <laughs> Whoopsies. Also, the first American serviceman killed in World War II was actually killed by the Russians. So what the also fuck? So, daisy maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Um, more U.S. servicemen were killed in the Air Corps than in the Marine Corps. So, you think about people on the ground versus people in the air. Huh. Yeah. Uh, There was a midwife in Auschwitz who delivered 3,000 babies during the Holocaust. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm sure fucking nothing. Uh, British soldiers got a ration of three sheets of toilet paper per day, but Americans got 22 sheets of toilet paper per day. It sounds like the pandemic. It sounds like the pandemic. What do you need 22 (laughs) for? (laughs) For their... I mean... And, like, good point. Like, they weren't eating much because they were on the front line. So I imagine their colons weren't very busy. But listen. Unless you got, like, dysentery or something, then you're very busy. (laughs) Then you're real busy. Yeah. I don't know. Um, In 1941, the year that the U.S. entered the war, three million cars were manufactured in the United States. But only 139 more were made during the entire war. Oh, my God. So that first year, there were 3 million cars being manufactured, and then only 139 until 19, after 1945. (laughs) That's crazy. They were not, like, worried about that. Mm -mm. Remember all, like, the spare metal and stuff was going Mm -hmm. to the war. Everything going to the war. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Only 20% of the males born in the Soviet Union in 1923 survived the war. So out of all the males born in the Soviet Union in 1923, 20% survived. So if you know five, four die. They sent all their men. I mean, they sent everybody. That is insane. All their kids. Yeah. Ugh. So... 
The youngest serviceman in the U.S. military was 12. He lied about his age when he enlisted in the U.S. Navy. His real age was discovered only after he was wounded. Oh, my God. I'm sure he looked mature for his age, I have to imagine. Or they just didn't even... I know some 12-year-olds that are like six feet tall. That's true. And a beard. Yeah, that's true. Mm Mm-hmm. Only one out of every four men serving on U-boats survived. U-boats were German submarines. submarines. Yeah. To avoid using the German-sounding name Hamburger during World War II, Americans called them Liberty Steaks. Uh, oh. It reminds me of Freedom Fries. Do you Freedom remember Freedom Fries? fries? We don't call them French Fries. We it call fuck, them Freedom Fries. No, we don't. Tanked. I was like, if you like, and like at the time, I was on George's side with most shit because I was twelve. <laughs> I was like, if you think I'm going to call them Freedom Fries, you can go fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And guess what? It didn't stick. You know no. why we still call them French fries. So <laughs> nice try. Okay. A couple more. Hitler's nephew, William Hitler, Bill Hitler. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill. <laughs> um, served in the U.S. Navy during World War what? II. What? Mm-hmm. Fought against the Germans. Hitler's brother. Nephew. Nephew. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's kind of cool. William Hitler. Interesting. Bill Hitler. <laughs> and he's like, please don't forgive, like, please don't uh, confuse me for. <laughs> yeah, please. Oh, my God. Private Hitler. Like, please don't put that on my name tag. <laughs> okay, so another fun fact. Henry Ford, the car manufacturer, and Adolf Hitler each kept a framed picture of the other on his desk. Whoa. They met at some event or whatever, and they were bros, and they had framed pictures of each other oh, as, like, celebrities. Oh, that's weird. Whoopsies. Henry Ford um, was where I grew up, so, like, he was a national treasure, because I grew up in Detroit, which know? is north of Detroit. So, Did mm, they know he had a Hitler on his hmm? desk? Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna want to fold that, fold that frame down. <laughs> yeah, for the shot. Yeah. Maybe cover it with a picture of your kid or something. <laughs> uh, if the U.S. was going to drop a third bomb on Japan, which they were prepared to do, it would have been on Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Think about that. Like mm-hmm. Tokyo is so congested. Like there's so many people there. Mm-hmm. It would have totally obliterated it. I think, and it wouldn't be the the city it is today. Oh hell no! And like, and who's no. to know if Hiroshima was Tokyo then? Like, who's to know if Nagasaki would have been as big as Tokyo now? Like, and mm-hmm. people, this is you what never know. People don't understand about like people think like New York City is like because like if you win the Super Bowl, you're the best in the world. If you win the the fucking MLB, whatever the World Series That's in right. the world, right? Yeah. And there's like one country and like maybe one Canadian team. We do this, like, as a mm-hmm. fucking profession. But, oh, shit, I just lost it. What was it? Oh, people think New York City is, like, the biggest city in the world. It's not even in the top 20. Not in the top 20. Yeah. The amount you of You taught people. us that. You taught us that on a previous episode. Yeah. That just, like, And it blew my, my mind. mind. Yeah. And we, like, when you're talking about Tokyo. It's part of that American heritage, right? Oh, it's yeah. It's part of that narrative of, like, we're the biggest and best. Ah. And it's not even, like, mm. if they had good. dropped it on Tokyo, I mean... Uh, I mean, Tokyo wouldn't be what it is no. today. I mean, we wouldn't have all the things. I mean, no. think about even, like, as, as dumb as this is, like, think about even, like, Nintendo and, like, uh-huh. video games and stuff. Like, a lot of that stuff originated in Japan. Like, in Tokyo, I assume Tokyo. I don't I'm know. But, Tokyo. like, a lot of that stuff, if you're crippled from a war, like, you're not going to be, yeah. you know, the at the forefront of technology. Um. Okay, last fun fact. Not so fun. Not, not, not so fun kinda fact. Kind of sad. Kind of sad. Uh. There was a Japanese intelligence army officer who never surrendered. So for 30 years after the war, he still held his position in the Philippines. And they eventually, it got so out of hand that his former commander even went there, traveled to the Philippines from Japan to personally issue orders to relieve him from duty in 1974. Oh my God. It ended in 45. Oh, he just sat there. He was like, no, I'm here for my country. I'm not, I'm not giving up. I don't believe you. How bizarre. I know it's sad. And like, guys, get this, somebody help him. Like right. he needs to be told that he's off duty. He can rest and live his life. Yeah. He served his country, whatever. So anyway, even though they were on the bad on side, the it's still sad. Side, but still, right. just, you can it put was still somebody trying to serve their country. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and that, my friend, is World War II in a wow. very, 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 very sloppy, broad nutshell. No. But now you hopefully have learned something. I've learned so many things. And I've, I've always been like, is that was that World War One or World War II? And I never know anything about World War One, So um, I didn't know the context. I didn't know the, like, Germans and shame and coming back with mm-hmm. for, for, for revenge. And, um, yeah. Russia was on our... What? I was like, it's Russia. If you would have asked me before the podcast, the axis, I would have been like, Russia, Germany, China. Which just tells you yeah. how much of a fucking disgusting propaganda bubble we live in. Because it's... Those two were on but our fucking side. But they helped save the... They helped stop the Holocaust. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. So... Very cool. Crazy. Uh, yeah. A, a good learning, educational, fun, but it, with a, you know what I mean, fun enough, fun uh, episode. <laughs> it's a it's a dark topic. Like, there's no getting around it. And, like, don't think that I'm being disrespectful. No. I'm oh, not trying no. to be disrespectful. No, no, no. I just believe if you explain things in a way that is funny and relatable, you internalize it. And then you can go forth and be like, oh, yeah, I do I remember do that, that, like, Russia was on the Allied side. Right. Or whatever. Right. No, definitely. So thank you very much. Um, I feel much, like, I, whereas I was feeling about 10% confident, I feel much more confident in my, like, oh, no, I could I could answer a question and be like, oh, no, I know that now. So. Now if you have that conversation with that neighbor, which you'll have to do remotely now because you're far away from them, like, you can bring some punches. Be like, actually? Actually. Let me explain. <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> Here we go. This is what happened. And then we drop bombs on Japan. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish you would. I wish you would bring it up because I am ready. <laughs> I am fully loaded. Cocked and loaded. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Um. Yeah, perfect. So if you guys have any ideas for any topics, uh, find us at uh, amateurintellectuals at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Um, we will be back next Sunday. Every episode we drop comes out on Sunday at, is it 8 Central? Although sometimes if you watch on YouTube, this is a secret just for you. If you go on YouTube and watch us, it's a little bit it's earlier, earlier than that. So. Mm. Yeah. It's like a free like uh backstage pass, but Yeah, not. it's like it's like an hour. <laughs> right. If you're interested. If you're that fucking interested, don't be. <laughs> um Yeah. Find us on Spotify, Apple, anything, anywhere. We're everywhere. Tell your friends, please. We need more listeners. Yeah. So hit us up. Uh you know where to find us. And thanks so much. That was a blast. Thank you, Caitlin. Yeah, thank you. Okay, ready? Yes. Three, two. One. Bye. Bye.